Thanks for stopping by Minnesota Black Girl Regiment. Check out the bell icon down there and make sure you get notifications and make sure you're subscribed. Uh, I've been finding out that people have been getting unsubscribed who aren't trying to get unsubscribed. And trust me, if there's anybody that gives people a reason to unsubscribe to their stuff, it's me. I, I can do that. I can give you reason. As always, like, comment, and share. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're, we are, we're going to talk about, um, you know what, let me preface this by saying I had these really grand designs of what I was going to do with this video. I was going to go on location. I was going to shoot video in these two different locations that I'm going to be talking about. I was going to uh, demonstrate what this looked like and, um, and it didn't work out, but I really want to talk about this and, and, and here's. And here's why I feel like this topic that I haven't named yet, you'll, you'll know when you see the title of the video before you watch. But the reason why this topic is so important is it demonstrates um, some of the problems that we have with accountability with people who are elected servants and appointed servants. And, 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 it's, and it speaks or it bespeaks um, about that that parallel track that other rail that um politicians and and bureaucrats so for over 400 on. days the the minnesota state capitol uh, building itself not the grounds in totality but the capitol building itself was closed and for well over 300 of those days um the capitol building also had barriers erected around it now the argument is, is that COOF restrictions required that the building be closed, okay? And I'm going to show you a, a, a picture here of what the closed uh, so grounds look like. There, there it is. There's, there's that picture, right, that you're seeing. Here's the picture of the, the Minnesota State Capitol building surrounded by a barrier now i don't want to say it's impenetrable obviously if you really wanted to get through that thing you could have but it's it's a symbol this says stay out this says we don't want you here now prior to that barrier going up and the decision to close the building to protect the people inside from the coup there, there has to be another thought process that comes into play. Here you have appointed and elected servants, people who, who work for us, we the people of Minnesota, which should be, as a, a state, should be open to we the people, but it, it denotes that this building no longer belongs to you, taxpayers, and no longer belongs to you, citizens this belongs to the government and the government views itself as a separate entity than the people now there'll be people who push back on me and say well gosh are you questioning the decisions to keep this building secure to protect people from the coof and and, and i'm yeah i absolutely i'm questioning that there are dozens if not hundreds of pictures of law enforcement officials surrounding this building during protests by patriots by patriots not a single patriot protest not a single patriot rally ever threatened to enter that building ever no one ever threatened to enter that building not in a legitimate sense there, there was hyperbolic statements saying we need to take this building back but it there was never an actual threat of, of physical damage or physical harm to any of the people in that building or around that building by patriots. Now, argument can be made that one of the reasons that that fence, that barrier went up was because when George Floyd was killed on the streets of Minneapolis, we knew there was going to be criminal thuggish behavior and there was only going to be one way to protect that building and that was to put a barrier around it. Now, 
Is that understandable? Yes. The building should be protected. Um, that's the taxpayer's building. And no one has a right to vandalize it. No one has a right to tear it down. But after the, the, the threat of those riots was cleared, after the threat of the criminal, thuggish, uh, immoral behavior of, of Antifa and the Black Lives Matter and the new Black Panthers and all these people who are burning down entire neighborhoods in Minneapolis and that the threat was no longer really there to, to do damage to that building, why did that barrier have to stay up? And, and, and what does that say about people in leadership positions? See, much like what we saw in Washington, D.C., and we still see in Washington, D.C., the elected servants are afraid of we the people. They're afraid of us. And, and they should be. They should have a, a, a healthy fear of those they govern. The problem that I have with what, what whip on, went on at the Capitol is that it's meant to keep us out. See, those people work for us. Those people are our, are our servants. We are the masters. And they've forgotten that. See, they met in private. They met in Zoom meetings. They met in, in, in social distance spaces within the Capitol. They had their offices there and they never had to have contact, Republican or Democrat or independent or anybody else. Not one of them ever had to have any uninvited contact with the, their constituency, with the people who employ them. Could you imagine walking into your employer and, and, and saying, like, I, I refuse to have contact with you today? No, you will not ask me questions about the job that you've hired me to do. And, and not only that, I am actually going to hire some people to keep a wall around me of security and to literally wall you out from holding me accountable for my actions. But there's something more dangerous about what, what, this, what this says, okay? We're going we're gonna to shift from St. Paul to So what are we seeing now. here? Here is George Floyd Square. And as you can see, here's this picture that says, you are now entering the free state of George Floyd. Now, much like the, the CHOP or the CHAZ out in, in Seattle, in Washington State, this... This autonomous zone in Minneapolis that sprang up around where George Floyd died in the streets uh, was, un was unfettered. You couldn't enter this area if you weren't the right ethnicity. You could not enter this area if you weren't a reporter who was friendly and to the narrative that was being painted of, of and there again, George Floyd dying. It was a tragic loss. Um, Derek Chauvin could have done more than what he did, should have done more than what he did. Um, the optics at the very least were bad, and now he's been convicted. So now he's guilty, according to the courts. He's guilty. All of that aside, the reaction, the rioting, the looting of local businesses, of, of chain businesses and private businesses, all of that, was criminal thuggish behavior. The taking over of this area where he died is criminal thuggish behavior, and it is not justified by any stretch of the imagination. And so several days ago, as I shoot this video, it is Saturday, uh, June 12th, uh, Minneapolis um, city, the city of Minneapolis ordered it cleared. They went in, they, they reopened and cleared it, and within hours, criminal thuggish behavior resulted in it being shut down again. And, and to my understanding, as I shoot this video, it remains under control of criminal thuggish individuals. That's what it is. It's criminal. I don't care who you are. It's criminal to do this to a public street. This is criminal. And so what we juxtapose in this situation is two government or a government entity, if you will, that is incapable of clearing this area and keeping it clear for a plethora of reasons. There's a multitude of reasons why, but it, they're out there and they exist. 
The reasons exist. But at the same time, that same governmental entity, and you would think an entity such as the state of Minnesota would be able to, to step in and say, hey, we're going to aid you, Minneapolis, in clearing this out. We're going to aid you in removing the criminal thuggish element that is that is taking control of your streets. We're going to aid you. Because they had the power and they had the wherewithal and they had the will to keep we the people out of the building that we own for over 400 days. But they don't have the ability to go in there and clear that square, to clear that area and keep it open. But they don't want to. See, they, they don't want to because it doesn't fit the narrative. See, they want to be seen as, as empathetic, sympathetic to the cause of what's happening at George Floyd Square right now. They don't want to come off as authoritarian in that, in that respect. Oh, no, 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 we can't have that. The state of Minnesota... The, the 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 public sector service area of Minnesota, the the elected servants of Minnesota, people like Governor Walls and Keith Ellison, they have no interest in in genuinely affecting change at George Floyd Square, even though it would be in the public interest of the state of Minnesota because this is taxpayer money that has, as I said in another video, Minneapolis is demanding that taxpayer money at the state level be used to to revitalize Minneapolis, to, uh, to repair the damage that they allowed to happen. The burning down of police precincts, the burning down of entire city blocks of businesses and looting and, and all of that. Not to mention the, the, the sheer waste of taxpayer dollars as people were arrested and, and, and either released or, or bonded out immediately to go back to their criminal thuggish behavior. See, the, the powers that be in the state of Minnesota don't want to tread on George Floyd Square because the optics for them would look bad. It would make them look like what we know them to be, pandering racists. Governor Tim Walls is a pandering racist. Keith Ellison is a race-baiting Marxist. He, he, he jumps at every chance to, to cause division in the state of Minnesota between ethnic groups. And it's wicked and it's evil. Just keep in mind that Governor Walls and Keith Ellison endorsed John Thompson for his run at the House. And, and when he threatened to burn down Hugo, Minnesota, if Hugo, Minnesota didn't drive Bob Kroll and his wife out of their neighborhood, then they were going to burn down Hugo. And he said, we burned down Minneapolis, we can burn down Hugo too. Not only is that a, a, a threat to violence directed at people that had no, have no say in where Bob Kroll is, but it, it's immoral. It's unethical. And, and Governor Walls and Keith Ellison could have done the moral and ethical thing, and they could have retracted. They could have rescinded their endorsement of John Thompson, but yet they remain silent. And it's the exact same mentality. It's a Marxist tool. They are going to remain silent about the escalating crime in Minneapolis. They're going to remain silent about people like John Thompson and his, his ethnic hatred and his threats of violence. They're going to remain silent about the crimish, criminal thuggish control of George Floyd, George Floyd Square. Because we've made George Floyd out to be a sainted hero and savior of, of all oppressed people in the state of Minnesota. So we can't tread on that area because it, it fits their narrative. It allows for, for ethnic divide, a cultural divide in the state of Minnesota. While at the same time, we're going to show how much we fear the electorate and we're going to keep them out of the very buildings and the, off of the property that their hard earned tax dollars throughout the years built and established. And so even the other day, as they finally, after the barriers came down a little over a week ago, and then they finally opened the building back up to the public, we the people, there were no meetings taking place for anybody to observe. Look, the, the House Democrats 
and the House Republicans and the Senate Democrats and the Senate Republicans and Governor Walls and all of these people, they're all complicit in this. They're all complicit. Now, there might be some that are outspoken, maybe to some degree, the new House Republican caucus, Eric, guys like Eric Mortensen. Yeah, they're speaking out. But overall, by and large, they're all complicit in not wanting to be held accountable. They're all complicit in not wanting to have contact with the dregs of society, you know, the voters and the taxpayers, the people who actually fund this state. See, there's this power struggle happening right now. And if you aren't on the right side of the cultural argument, like they don't want anything to do with you. And the Republicans are as, just as guilty of wanting to make sure they're on the right side of things here. The right side as defined by who, I, I don't know. This has got to stop. Like the very same desire to, to ice us out of the building that belonged to us, to ice us out of the ability to go in and observe meetings and observe uh, committee hearings and to observe sessions, all of those things that iced us out and kept us away and now, as our economy was devastated by COOF restrictions and, and, and COOF shutdowns, our economy was devastated. Small businesses were just decimated and destroyed. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small businesses closed, either because they were burned to the ground during riots or because our governor and, and the inability of our legislature, the House and the Senate, to Stop him from what he did. They're all complicit in the destruction of our economy while taxing the living hell out of us so that now we have a massive surplus and the state acts like it belongs to them. That money, instead of trying to figure out how to spend that money, they should be returning it to those, those of us, especially to the small businesses that have been suffering the most. See, we shut down the state capital while we let massive retailers, big box stores like Target and Walmart and others to stay open. And close small businesses. And we can't have an effect on the thugs at the George Floyd Square. We cleared it for a few hours, but boy, they're right back. The elected servants, for the most part in the state of Minnesota, and the appointed servants, for the most part in the state of Minnesota, exist in a world, a parallel world, on a parallel track to the rest of us. And they don't want to be bothered with us. And, and, and that is the symbolism of the entire last over 400 days. We're scared of you. And we're going to use excuses like the coof. We're going to use those excuses to keep you iced out and disconnected. So you can't see what we're doing or what we're planning. And now we've taxed the living hell out of you during an economic downturn that was brought on by a pandemic. No, it was not. It was not brought on by a pandemic. They continue to tax the living hell out of us. to the tunes of millions of dollars in surplus. Sounds a little bit like taxation without representation because really we never had access to our representatives. People will tell you story after story after story of reaching out and asking to speak to their representatives and they most of them wouldn't return an email or a phone call or a message. And good luck getting them to appear at an event They're afraid of us. They're terrified. And they should be. Because we're in charge. But they also should be answering questions. And they should never be allowed to meet in private in a locked up building that we can't have ac access to ever again. Not calling for violence. Not calling for the initiation of any kind of force. I'm just saying we can't allow this to happen again. It can't happen again. Never again. It cannot happen ever, ever, ever again. We cannot allow it. So let that sink in. They could keep us out. 
of the Capitol building. But they can't keep the thugs out of George Floyd Square. As always, until next time, don't worry about your safety. Fight for your liberty and your freedom. And six Emperor, Tyrant.